This is the general uh, docs uh, talk that we try and do every KubeCon uh, to make sure that folks uh, knowingly um, understand and try and care about documentation generally in the tech world. Um, and specifically for the Kubernetes project, we think this is really important. So while turnout isn't always great, we're going to keep doing this every year. Um, and we're going to keep trying to get folks to help us out. And that's exactly the uh, topic of our talk today, that we want a lot of help in the documentation of the Kubernetes project. So I'd like to introduce um, ourselves. We are some of the special interest group for documentation for Kubernetes. My name is Natalie Vlatko, and my pronouns are she, her. I am an open source architect at Cisco, specifically with the Open Source Program Office, and I've been involved in Kubernetes for the last five years. And I am Divya Mohan. My pronouns are also she, her. I am a senior technical evangelist at SUSE, and like she said, we both some of SIG docs and this and hopefully represent our SIG pretty well. Yeah, at the moment we actually have, or um, uh, well, very soon will be the Meet the Kubernetes Contributor Community um, group um, where you can come and meet all the other different um, SIGs and some of our other co chairs and leads, and we'll be there after this talk as well. Yep. Okay, so uh, looking at today's talk, the general theme is help wanted. Please help us, we want help. And we want to direct you into the areas that the Kubernetes docs generally needs your attention and love and care. Um, and so what we're going to be looking at um, today is learning about the Netlify build issues that we experience on the Kubernetes website, how we can, um, as, a, as a note, that we want to be improving uh, proud utilization, which is the Kubernetes CI CD system, um, how we want to improve our our reference documentation generation, which is a real integral part of the project, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, how we need help with web development, how an infrastructure project such as Kubernetes does need web developers, and it's very hard to, to, uh, to advertise that in a, in a cloud native space, but we're going to try. Um, and finally, how we also need help with some issue triaging as well. Uh, we're going to go through how you can help and also then where you can find us. Right, but before we delve into that, uh, let's talk a little bit about the scale, uh, and specifically the scale to which the Kubernetes documentation caters to. So we have around um, 1 lakh 30,000 plus pages as of today, and as we speak, there are probably a couple more added in that number. Uh, we have this spread across 15 uh, different languages, including English. And we have, um, like Natalie said before, we have the reference docs as one of the sub-projects, but we also have blogs. We have the different uh, translations of the website. And of course, the main website itself, where the documentation for um, the English localization is hosted. And our website caters to around 20,000 to uh, 100,000 users per day globally. And um, all of this magic that you see is serviced, so to say, by 2,500, around 2,500 voluntary contributors, again, globally. Um, some more stats. Uh, we have three minor releases every year. Uh, as you'll already probably know, which um, amounts to around an average of 45 enhancements per release. Um, and also, like with each release, we have blogs uh, that come out, which are published and require reviews and approval. And that's around 12 uh, blogs per release. And we also have reference docs, which need to be regenerated uh, because, you know, features change as pretty much everyone in this room can attest to. And we require a regeneration of these reference docs every release. So what does this mean? I mean, Rihanna said it best, so I'm not going to say it. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. And uh, we are going to delve into some of our pain points. And Natalie, do you want to take it over from here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we mentioned a couple um, earlier, but we'll just go over them again right now. Uh, the first pain point that we will, um, or one of the pain points that we have um, is reference uh, documentation generation. 
which is something that is really underloved and undisturbed in the Kubernetes project, despite being very integral to our releases three times a year. And it's something that we um, are desperately looking for help for, and not just help, but also people who want to have autonomy and ownership over an integral part of the project like this. Um, another pain point is issue triaging. The amount of a great, great people coming to read our documentation and then realizing something is missing, so they open up an issue, but then that issue lingers because there's no one around to actually fix that problem, which is a great way that, uh, um, for uh, generating those issues, but we just then get a lot more work and we don't know how to triage and bundle them up into work that actually should be distributed to the community. Another pain point is web development. We mentioned it. How do you get web developers interested in cloud native? I don't know. I mean, we are we are looking to try and get um, a lot of help on the web dev side, more help than my atrophied skills can currently muster. Um, and so that's another area that we'll be looking at um, later on. Um, Netlify er errors. This is something that uh, I can't. We've shamefully been like postponing on this since I think last February. Uh, we've tried our best. Uh, we've you know gone through Netlify documentation, asked for support, uh, we've debugged it on our own, but honestly, it just doesn't seem to go away. It's just like that persistent pain in your neck after a really wild night out, it's that. So that's one, and uh, improving prow utilization is another, uh, you know, challenge that we're looking to address. And if, you know, working with, um, bots, so to say, is your um, strength or is one of your skill sets, please reach out. But we're going to be delving into each or some of these in a bit. And I think Natalie is going to take the first one with Netlify errors. Yeah, not my favorite topic at all. <laughs> um, but uh, we need to talk about it because we experience Netlify errors a lot. So let's go into some of the context of this. We use Netlify in the Kubernetes project to stage our uh, stage PR content. We use it across the entire project. It means that we use this to preview the changes that are suggested by a PR before merging it. Um, and that is any, almost any kind of change, um, but also what we use that for specifically on the doc side is um, specifically around things when it comes to layout of eyesight, diagrams is always a really useful thing to have Netlify um, preview on, generally how we're um, looking at creating new tables or things that are embedded on the site too, um, and also actually how um, the um, line spacing works, specifically for our localizations te localization teams, having the preview for that is also super useful. Um, and so as Divya mentioned, as of February 2022, we've had some, de some deployed previews are failing, and this is one of the error messages that you can see with that. Um, Divya was very, um, uh, I would say, generous with this slide because she said some deploys are failing. <laughs> I would say it's half. <laughs> and it's, it's a huge number for us. Um, and it's something that we have, um, as mentioned, tried to debug, and we are just not Netlify <laughs> experts. Um, and so we are really feeling the impact of this. You know, documentation PRs take a lot longer um, because there isn't that preview, um, and then so there's a delay, so we can make sure that what we're actually merging is, is going to look the correct way. Um, it can also actually mask a real issue with a PR sometimes, that if the preview fails, but there is actually something else wrong that we're not catching that the preview would usually help us catch, um, then that's, that can also be an issue. And also actually it can show that checks have failed when um, on the Netlify side, but actually other checks are failing too, and the, the Netlify failure masks the other. Sure. Um, and that's something that is uh, hard for us to actually discern. Um, and then the email deluge. Oh my goodness, no one likes getting as many emails as we get about Netlify preview issues and Netlify deploy failures. And I'm about to show you what they look like. Divya, how many do you, of these do you think that you get a day? I have a separate folder in my <laughs> inbox for these um, because I get so many of them and we know that they're related to this. And we've been constantly trying to debug it uh, we've gotten all the experts or, or all the expertise that we have currently. And uh, I can tell you that over the past one year, we have around 20,000 plus emails. And that's not even exaggerating. I probably would be understating it at this point because I can feel my mobile vibrating right now. And it could be another Netlify email that's coming through. Totally. So what needs to be done? We actually require help of someone diving in 
hopefully maybe not concentrating on much other work in the Kubernetes project, really dedicated to diving in and finding the root cause of these failures and errors. Um, and then we need a, a lot of help with testing because we really want to get this bug sorted. Um, and then obviously the actual fixing of the issue. We're not looking for just one person. We do want folks coming in and working together um, on this. And we are absolutely willing to, for even possible current contributors right now, if you're listening on this stream and you think that this is something you'd like to work on, let us help um, triage or like uh, kind of like get some of other contributors to take some other work off your plate if you're willing to come over and work on this because this is not going to be something that is easily fixed. It is a meaty, meaty challenge um, and we are really, really looking for your help. And who can actually be the people that help here? So we do need folks who have Git, um, GitHub org membership of the Kubernetes project. It is going to be something where you're doing a lot of tests, putting in a lot of PRs that are going to hopefully try and help, um, help fix this issue, um, and hopefully working with people who can review and approve your work and vice versa. So we do need someone who's already involved in the project or um, someone who's willing to become a member and get involved is also really worthwhile. Um, Knowledge of Hugo, we definitely need this too, particularly the Doxy theme, which is what the Kubernetes website uses. Um, and, de and naturally, but we had to write it in case it was an obvious knowledge of Netlify as well. Um, so if you have two out of three of these things and you're willing to acquire the third, come and talk to us. We absolutely want to hear from you. And just to add on to what Natalie said, um, the Kubernetes GitHub org membership is required because right now we get these emails and we have elevated access to Netlify. So if you are to troubleshoot all of these issues, you probably also will need elevated access. And GitHub org membership from Kubernetes certifies that you have had consistent contributions over time, and you can be trusted to work alongside us. This is why we require that. And like she said, we are willing to help you um, you know, if you are consistently contributing and helping us out or have helped out on other areas of the project, we're willing to help you get that. But again, terms and conditions apply, so let us know if this is something that is there. And how do we get, get, uh, get to, uh, you know, how do you get to reach out to us? That's in the next slide. It is. This is the tracking issue for anyone who's interested in diving more into this issue specifically. Um, we will make the um, slides available on Shed after as well, so you can access it later. Divya's done a great work, a great work in putting a lot of the information in the tracking issue to g help us get started with really pursuing this work. All right, take it away. <laughs> yep, and uh, Natalie mentioned that uh, we have a lot of issues, and by issues we don't mean personal ones, which we do. But uh, we mean issues filed to the GitHub repo for the website. So um, currently, uh, we have 700 plus issues, out of which 300 issues require triage. Now, what does triage mean, actually? Um, we haven't gotten around to reviewing whether this is an actual issue relevant to you know, the quality of the docs or the content that the docs contain or uh, whether the, you know, it's around the accuracy of the docs. Um, this, this means that the request or the issue that has been filed could be literally anything, and because we are so over overloaded with the kind of uh, issues that have been filed, we're not just able to get to the triage of these issues. So there are around 300 issues currently that require um, assistance in terms of triaging. And uh, let's not even get to the backlog, backlog part because we have 100 issues in backlog, <laughs> uh, which means that they are uh, triaged, they are open for contribution, but they are slightly lower in priority, uh, which means that they haven't had much love. Uh, people aren't there to you know, take care of them and get them allocated to contributors, or you know, contributors haven't actually uh, reached out to work on them. So why and how does this impact us? Because if you have so many issues, and if you, if you see the Kubernetes website GitHub repo, we have incoming issues every day. Because every person would, will, I mean, if you read docs, it's generated by a human like you, except the reference ones. But that's also code, uh, code snippets that are you know, generated. So there, uh, there's a human 
I mean, there's a human element somewhere there. And um, because there's this human element, there's definitely going to be an issue with the dogs at some point in your journey of consuming them. And these issues get filed, but there's nobody really to actually work on them. And the more the number in the, um, in the queue of, you know, the more the number of issues that are actually there, the more the actual issues that need to be worked on and are relevant to the Kubernetes docs, that, that actual surfacing becomes difficult. And um, I've seen several instances of these where contributors actually pick up an issue and they said that they want to work on it, but it turns out that because it's not being triaged, um, it's not actually an issue relevant to the docs, it's actually a support issue. So we need help with triaging the issues, which means that we, help, we need help with the labeling of the issue appropriate to the kind that has been um, reported and also, you know, get the right audience to work on it. And um, of course, when you are saying uh, that, you know, there are issues and when we're saying that there are issues, uh, this leads to incomplete and sometimes technically inaccurate in information. Uh, within the documentation. And that's not what, you know, you'd want out of a uh, project uh, documentation that's so widely adopted and used. So um, how, uh, that's how this impacts us. So what needs to be done? So for this purpose, we've introduced, um, uh, you know, new, norm, new role the, within the Kubernetes um, website, um, or rather SIG docs, known as the issue wrangler. And uh, what this issue wrangler does is basically help with the labeling and um, you know outreach and socialization of these issues, as well as management of the issues um, in terms of like project management, because that's something uh, that we're not really good at, clearly. So uh, we have introduced this issue wrangler role to fit in just about the member role, which is the GitHub or contribu uh, contributor that we just mentioned a while back. So if you are already a GitHub org member within the Kubernetes organization and are looking to sort of, um, you know, start um, contributing to Kubernetes website, um, this probably would be a good role for you to uh, take on after you've made a few contributions to K website because you would have more awareness about what kind of issues are filed to the GitHub repo, what, um, you know, uh, what requires labeling in a particular way, and all of that. So this comes, this level of um, responsibility comes in after the member, and uh, just before you start reviewing and approving PRs. Do you want to add something, Natalie? Um, we have um, also a short staff of uh, reviewers and approvers too, but specifically part of the reason that we're so bad at a job like this is that because those of us who are reviewers and approvers are really concentrating on that aspect and are unable to use our time to do any issue triage or wrangling. So it really is about more bodies in the actual website sure. repo itself to make sure that we can actually get work happening and, and, and moving throughout the project. Right, and again, who can participate? Like I just mentioned, this is not a good role for a person to assume right out, right out of the, you know, if you're a beginner, let's put it that way. If you're a beginner, this is not a good role because you are probably not familiar with the kind of, um, you know, issues that are being reported to the Kubernetes website. You need to have that context first. So when you have worked your way around the Kubernetes GitHub org membership and you have some knowledge about how the documentation process already works within SIG docs, um, this is a good role for you uh, because you have some context, obviously. Um, and uh, these are our requirements. There's also a documentation um, in, our in, in our contributor guide that lists these very, um, you know, requirements and you can check that out in our contributor guide on the Kubernetes website. And uh, really it's um, also uh, it's also given that you would need to work collaboratively because you're not gonna be the only person working on this. There will be a PR wrangler, there will be an approver and a reviewer who will work around you. Uh, but that's, that's a given again because you're working in a global project as well. 
Now, um, so if you want to uh, sort of nominate yourself, um, and if you are interested, um, and you have a GitHub org membership, please feel free to scan the code. This leads you to um, an email that I've sent out for the nomination. Please read through the documentation, and if you're eligible, uh, this would be great. This would be a great opportunity for you to sort of move your way up through the contributor ladder. Okay, uh, we're only going to take 10 more minutes of your time, but this is definitely a meaty area that we want to chat about now, which is our reference documentation generation. Now, Divya mentioned before that there is humans still behind some of this work, which is the folks writing the code that actually, actually helps our auto-generated docs uh, take place. Um, and so what we want to do is dive into a little bit of the pain points that we have here now. So for context, our reference documentation, um, it is a sub project. It isn't a, sub a formal sub project, but it's listed as one. And so we have this issue of uh, there's no ownership of this very important aspect of the docs and of releases of Kubernetes throughout the yep. year. Um, that dedicate that lack of ownership means you know if everyone owns something, no one owns anything. It's that kind of unfortunate thing where no one feels responsibility or accountability for making sure that this part of the project runs as it should, other than maybe us as the leads of the documentation, sub, uh, documentation special interest group. Um, but that is also something that uh, we're trying to help out with in terms of finding folks who are willing and, and wanting to dedicate that time um, and that um, accountability space. Um, it also actually requires a good knowledge, good knowledge of Go for the tooling that helps um, uh, generate these, these docs. We really do need someone who has very um, decent technical expertise in Go to come in and drive a lot of this ownership. We do have some hopefulness with one of our yeah. tech leads, uh, Chi Ming, um, who is awesome, and I just want to say a shout out, Chi Ming, if you're watching, you're, you're great, um, who is going to help out with some of this, which is really great. But uh, Chi Ming can't work alone. This is a huge, huge amount of work and we do need other folks who want to come in and own this together and own that this is actually going to be working and running smoothly. Um, the other thing that we do want to mention, I wish we had a lot more beginner friendly things to mention with what we need help with, but there is a steep learning curve with the reference docs. Um, I will openly admit I don't know much about our reference Neither documentation, do <laughs> um, the generated docs, um, and so we, we need someone who is willing to jump in and really learn the ins and outs of, of this part of our project. Um, this uh, we've 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 lost tech leads where that knowledge was um, in our project before, and this is why this is why we're really really struggling with this part of a sub project that's not really one, but we're willing to turn it into one to get folks uh, working and behind it. How does it impact us? The burdens of reference doc it falls on. Very few people every release. Usually per release, it's one person, but we try and make sure it's a different, different person, person per release. Yep. Um, and so that's three times a year. There is a bunch of work that really one person is having their door knocked on saying, hey, please help, we need you to do this so that the release goes out on time. Um, and of course, because there is that bus factor of one person, reviews and approvals take a lot longer. Even general issues when there's something wrong. We, I remember Divya, we had an issue with some of the generation um, a while ago and it took a long time to solve because we just didn't have the people ab Absolutely. available to work on it. Yep. So. What needs to be done? We, as the SIG docs leads, we want to help formalize and staff the sub project, which is where we would help you. It's a work in progress, as I mentioned as we speak. Chi Ming, one of our tech leads for docs, will be involved. But again, we need a lot more people to come in and help. Um, and our call for contributors to the sub project is, is, is what this really is. We are looking for folks who want to come in and have a leadership role in an area of the, of the Kubernetes project that is integral to every release and is integral to the entire project. It is something that is meaty, that is going to be resume building, that is going to be something that will improve not only your work in open source overall, but your general skill set because of how deeply technical this work is, is required to be. Um, so please, please help us. This is our call to please help us. Who can help us? Uh, that is something that is a really, really great question. We need intermediate level plus proficiency of Go. We list this because we just want to note that this is not a beginner project 
aspect. Like it's really not beginner. We do need folks who have uh, a bit of time. Um, uh, thank you for the call, 10 minutes. A bit of time or a bit of um, uh, a knowledge that they're willing to sink in for the uh, reference docs. Um, it would be nice to have Kubernetes org membership. You will get it while working on this because of the work that you'll be putting in and myself and Divya will be the first two people to sponsor that membership sure, yes. once you're coming in and doing that work. Um, so this is something, a part of a project that can actually help you get that org membership, get you involved more in other areas of Kubernetes other than docs as well. It's a really great opportunity. Um, and it's also nice to have previous contributions to the Kubernetes project, but it's not required. Folks who are just out there interested in wanting to jump into Kubernetes for the first time with Go knowledge and you want to help with docs, this is a great way way to get started, um, and then that can also build the path to future um, contributions to other areas of the project, or still in SIG Docs if you'd like to stick around. The tracking issue, again, big props to Divya, um, top documentarian of the year for the CNCF, um, who has put together a lot of information about this issue. Feel free to scan this um, or, or follow the link for those watching on the stream um, so that you can jump in and look at the um, tracking discussion. Um, we use GitHub discussions uh, for this um, and for other areas of our, of our uh, SIG as well. Um, so please come in and, and be part of the conversation. And last but not the least, we're going to speed through on this one, uh, even though uh, we have like eight minutes. So we're going to leave some time for questions if you have. So the last area that we're going to talk about is web development. And I know it sounds funny that we're talking about web development in like a cloud native conference, but that's where we are. Um, so the website obviously exists on the internet in the form of a web, like web pages in the form of web pages. So obviously there is some. Uh, you know, voodoo involved uh, in terms of like Hugo and um, Netlify and stuff like that. So our project isn't very well advertised as uh, being in need of web development help, but it does, uh, fun fact, because um, as we saw in the previous couple of slides, nearly we have um, a lack uh, one lakh thirty thousand plus pages that require actual rendering to uh, website content, and uh, we utilize H uh, Hugo where actual web dev expertise is required. Um, and if you're a web dev looking to make an impact, SigDocs is like one of that area where you could. And um, shout out to the Sig Contribex folks where I think Kate's contributor website is also an area that could benefit from the skill set. So um, what needs to be done is um, we basically rely on experts um, all across the project. Uh, we allow, um, not be, we don't allow, rather we rely on our engineers to actually uh, you know, tell us uh, more about the features that they're writing. So we obviously want you as the web devs uh, to tell us where we could improve our website, whether it's design, whether it's the programming or whether whatever area that you feel is lacking within the website, we want you to have an opinion about it and let us know about that opinion. Uh, because we want to enable our users across the globe to have a better experience of the docs when they actually consume it. Uh, so that's the you know only thing that needs to be done as like um, from our side, we are issuing a call for help here, but um, if you are a web dev and you have knowledge, please, please reach out to us. Um, and who can participate? Like, for web dev experience, obviously you need to have like um, an intermediate level of proficiency uh, with the languages. Um, and also it would be good to have, it's not listed here, but it would be good to have the knowledge of uh, the Hugo team uh, sorry, Doxy theme for Hugo because that's also how our uh, Kubernetes website is rendered and it's using the static site generator. Uh, but Kubernetes GitHub org membership and previous contribution to Kubernetes, these are nice to haves. These are not absolutely essential. Uh, we can help you get there like with uh, the other areas if you are contributing consistently. So if this is something you're interested in, please chime in on our uh, SIGDOCS or SIGDOCS blog channels, and we'd be happy to help you. 
Speaking of blog, we do have a bonus area that we're going to chat about, Divya, and uh, very quickly we're going to go through uh, the need for blog reviewers and approvers. Um, this is again something where, uh, for context, for folks who may not know, we have um, published around 50 blogs annually for the Kubernetes. Um, a huge amount of those blogs also come around during release time, so there is a lot of traffic during um, the end portions of each release so that we can review and approve um, the release blogs that will be coming out and the different feature blogs that get written. Um, but at the moment, our blog subproject only has four approvers slash reviewers. And for those who don't know, you need an LGTM and an approve, two people, two different people on any kind of PR that we work on in Kubernetes. But specifically in our blog project, we subproject, we really do need two people bouncing off one another. Having only four actual team members who aren't available all the time, it's a problem. We are really, really short-staffed. I'm actually one of those who is hardly ever available. Um, and so it's one of those things that we absolutely need a lot more staff and a lot more support. How does it impact us, the backlog of blogs? People read the Kubernetes blog to find out how new features work and where they can start actually using them. They want to hear about the different deprecations that happen around Kubernetes or things that are going to impact the way that they deploy um, in their company. They, there's a lot of things that the Kubernetes blog is um, really important for that we in the SigDocs uh, group um, have to help shepherd and, and push out for releases, but generally across the whole timeline of the project. But with only a couple of us, it leads to burnout, it leads to a terrible work-life balance, it leads to us actually being very absent of brewers and reviewers, which means we don't put in the time and the effort needed to actually read and engage with the content that's going out, and then the content becomes really suboptimal and not really great. Um, so. Uh, we, what needs to be done. Um, we need an increase in the stable pool of contributors for the blog sub, blog sub project. And what that means is more reviewers and approvers. So more people who are willing to read and go through the, the blogs, follow our style guide that we have in order to give um, those kinds of reviews to the, to, to blog writers, um, and blog writers come from all over the project and beyond. Um, and we also need help initiating a shadow program to actually get those re reviewers and, re and approvers upskilled. Um, we want you to start this in an informal capacity. That would be great to help balance the burden, but we do want to actually formalize uh, a shadow program for the blog so that we can get a lot more people coming in and less of the burnout of the current four team members that are, that are working on it. Um, I I want to shout out to one of our tech leads, Tim Bannister, who's already starting some of this process. Big thank you to you, Tim. Um, and hopefully we can promote the contributors up the ladder around the blog. Who can participate? Org members, once again, and that you must be willing to shadow and perform the role initially in an informal capacity. Divya. Right, and we're at the end of our presentation with this. Um, so where can you find us? You have, this will be on shared by the way. So we have a mailing list, and uh, the bonus is that subscribing to the mailing list actually gets you invited to all of our meetings automatically. Uh, so that's a, yeah. And uh, you can also uh, join us on the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, we are at SigDocs for all things documentation, of course. And we also have different uh, sub-project-based uh, Slack channels, which is SigDocs blog for the blog sub-project, as well as SigDocs localization for the localization sub-project. Now, when it comes to GitHub, uh, it's the Kubernetes website repo for documentation and the blog and the localization. And uh, for the reference docs, we have uh, Kubernetes 6 slash reference docs as the GitHub repo. So all of this is going to be available and it's hyperlinked, so you do not need to worry if you cannot catch it right off this slide. But that is um, all we have for today, and we hope you had some idea of where you could start contributing and we invite any questions that you want. Yeah, and we may have to get off the stage, to, unfortunately, but we're going to hang around for a little few few minutes yep. so that we can take your questions one-on-one. -on -one. Big yep. thank you for coming. Docs are really important. We're going to keep talking about it every year so until people are sick of it. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much.